Welcome to section 6, Mapping with GeoJSON. In the previous section we covered transitions. In the first video of this section, we'll look at how to set up a GeoJSON base map. We'll start by finding shapefiles, formatting them, and finally rendering the map. Let's jump right into one of the best locations for getting large shapefile maps. For the US, the Census Bureau's Tiger products offer boundary maps with varying degrees of details, some including rivers, roads, and features. Some of these maps can contain astounding levels of detail and can be quite large. We're going to go with the cartographic boundary shape files, and then on the county type map, which you'll notice comes in three resolutions. Because we won't be zooming into a great level of detail, let's keep the size of our shape files as low as possible and download the 500k resolution. This should show up zipped. Next we'll want to head over to a site that will help us convert our data, converter.mygeodata.eu. Note that you could either upload simply the cb underscore 2013 underscore us state 50k dot shape file or you can upload the entire zipped folder once it's recognized the contents of your folder you want to specify a number of encoding and formatting components note that geojson d3 expects a format called wgs-84 as an output coordinate system basically this means that it expects the coordinates for the objects on the map to be given a latitude and longitude x and y coordinate for reading documents d3 could only read utf8 encoding so we'll need to adjust that as well for future use note that you could specify the attributes in your shape file that you want included in the output once you've stored your converted geojson file on your local host which is in the directory www.root slash initpub on windows machines using internet information services Let's jump back into the editor. We're not going to use topo.json for this map, but it doesn't hurt to remember that it can be included through the small link on line 8 of our header. This enables some increased functionality, but it isn't needed for the map that we're going to create. First, let's start with some basic width and height components, as well as a variable in which to store our data. Below, notice that we've completed the same d3.json call, into which we passed a fun function as the second parameter that returns in console logs all of our county's data as well as attaches it to our data variable. If we were to load this in the browser and look in the console, we would currently see our GeoJSON returned as an object, including a key called features. Inside of features, there are several thousand further objects that contain features such as geometry with given coordinates, as well as properties such as name, aland, county, FP, state ID, and so on. But though we're not going to look through that entire object in this video, I would encourage viewers to always load their data sources in the console and become familiar with their format so as to strategize how it can best be utilized for the project at hand. Next, we'll need to append an SVG. We'll also need to append a path. This is a D3Geo function that takes our latitude and longitude-based GeoJSON data and plots it to a particular projection of the world. The default projection is Albers USA, which is best suited for visualizing US maps, and has a default point size of 4.5 px. For world maps, we would need to specify another projection, such as our previously rendered map of the UK. Because this map is of the US, however, we can just use the normal path generator without feeding in a separate projection call. Next, we'll need to append all of the smaller paths contained in our GeoJSON file. For our current data, this is pretty easy, as we'll just need to pass counties.features as our data for all of our paths, as well as a given fill value. Note that we've also given each of our individual paths a class attribute of counties. This is so we can later select them and apply CSS values more easily. If you save your file and open it in the browser, you should see a pleasantly gray map of the U.S. divided by counties. It's pretty cool the complexity of latitude and longitude points that D3 can interpolate into a map projection and easily handle. You might also have noticed that it takes a second for the map to load with this many paths. Because our map currently doesn't have any functionality, let's jump back into the editor. Because we've assigned our paths a class, we can easily select them and utilize an event listener. Let's use mouse over to turn the counties red when they're hovered over. Remember from previous sections, the ever-useful d3.selectThis, which functions the same way as a this called function in jQuery. Also note that we've used our transition property to ease colors back to normal over half of a second once the mouse has left a given county. Now that we've set up our map and given it a hint of interactivity, let's jump back into the browser and see the result. You might notice a slight lag when loading the map. This is due to our using GeoJSON and the large number of paths needed for all of our counties. To fix this, you can instead use TopoJSON, which lowers the pathing coordinates by combining the boundaries polygons that share borders into single paths. If you open up your console, you can see the object with the type of feature collection, including features of geometry, geometry as well as properties. In the next section, we're going to make our current map into a choropleth map, one of the most popular ways to show geographic-specific trends. But don't forget that what we've covered in this section, including the conversion of shapefiles to JSON, 
the proper encoding and formatting for JSON to be used in D3 maps, as well as how to explore the data structure of your JSON so that you can strategize how to plot future maps. See you in the next video.